Roy Benitez, leader of the JTF, has been on the front line since the dollar flu was first unleashed on New York City. He is respected by those around him, particularly by those under his command and the division agents working alongside him. He is legitimately a good man who only hopes to be able to do his part in helping the city make it through this chaotic time. So what could he have possibly done to assist in the creation of the Rogue Agent Network? Roy Benitez was a narcotics officer for eight years, before being promoted to precinct captain. His father was a Chinatown police officer who referred to police work as the family business. So for Benitez, it only felt natural to follow in his father's footsteps and join the force. He received multiple accolades for his bravery over his career, and was among the first of the responders to the 9-11 tragedy, and barely managed to escape the collapse of the South Tower. He endeavours to always do the right thing, even if that means upsetting a few people along the way. For him, there are only two ways of doing things, the right way and the wrong way. Benitez is a well-documented love for New York City, not just the area, but the people too. He is a proud New Yorker. Before the dollar flu outbreak, Benitez and his wife were on the verge of separation. His religious commitment to the police force, coupled with their inability to have children, placed immense strain on their relationship. And when the illness claimed her life, Benitez took her loss extremely hard, and it triggered guilt that he still struggles to deal with to this day. Benitez was put in the position of leading the Joint Task Force in New York City. We've signed on for a thankless job in a thankless time, but I just wanted to say thank you. The work we are doing here, it's ceaseless and painful and necessary. We're all tired and hungry, bruised and broken, but we pick ourselves up. Drink some water, dream of Kermans, and get ready for another day. I just want you to know that even if we don't talk, if we never see each other in person and only check in over the radio, every single one of you is important. Every single one of you is needed. Every single one of you brings something to the table that makes us better and stronger. I trust you with my life. And I hope that you trust me. He is well respected by those under his command and they trust him to make the right decisions with their lives and the future of New York City in mind. However, some of these decisions are not his to make. Following the construction of the quarantine zone in the middle of Manhattan, Benitez tasked the JTF with running the security. This quickly proved to be too big of a job as the area was simply too large to be managed effectively. Eventually the riots began to get out of control Gangs and hostile groups started to merge together and over time overthrow a number of the regions within the city. JTF officers were being pushed back, attacked and murdered. It became a conflict zone, a no man's land. Eventually news of this made it back to the White House and President Waller activated Directive 51 dispatching the Strategic Homeland Division to New York City. The majority of the SHD were given the job of assisting the JTF with regaining control of the quarantine zone. But even with the addition of these highly trained individuals, it was too late. The small team of division agents had proved ineffective at getting control of the situation. So the president requested the activation of a second wave of division agents to bolster numbers. However, not long after, the president and then the vice president died under mysterious circumstances and the speaker of the house was sworn in. President Ellis immediately ordered a full retreat of all JTF personnel from the Midtown Manhattan Quarantine Zone. On top of this, he wanted the entrances sealed off, effectively walling anyone who remained inside. And it was Benitez's job to make sure this happened. He ordered the JTF out of the zone, and he had them block off all entrances, ensuring that no one could get in or out. 
thousands of civilians, construction workers, and the first wave of division agents were trapped inside, most of which would never be heard from again. Shortly after, the second wave of division agents arrived on the scene. Though the majority of them were killed while in transit, a handful were able to make their way through to the base of operations in Manhattan. Meanwhile, at the JTF's Lincoln Tunnel checkpoint, Benitez's location is overrun by rioters. Luckily for him, the second wave division agents had managed to make it to him in time, rescuing and returning him to the base of operations. Although initially, he wasn't overly happy about having to work with the feds, over time he began to warm to the agents. With the division agents taking point, and Benitez commanding the JTF in support, they were able to work together to direct missions against the multiple hostile factions who were taking control of the city. The rioters, cleaners, LMB, and Rikers throughout the city have been severely crippled in their attempts to take control. Their leaders have been eliminated, and even the power vacuum that closely followed has been put to rest. But the fight wasn't over. Benitez's close colleague throughout the crisis, Paul Rhodes, has decided that enough is enough. Rhodes always struggled with the calls coming from above, and has disagreed with the way that the division agency operated from the start. Given too much power, a number of these agents were starting to turn their backs on the country by going rogue, which was in his opinion creating more harm than good. So he wanted to get as far away from Fei Lao and the division as possible. Benitez was the glue that was holding them together up until now, but even he couldn't stop this valuable member of the team from leaving. Kowalski? You're leaving too? Afraid so, Cap. They made a pretty compelling argument. Yeah, they do. Look. You need me to stick around and wrap things up. It's fine. We'll cover for you. I don't want to put the others at risk. Don't worry about it. Uh, thanks. You know, sorry for asking, Cap, but you ever consider leaving? Joining the peacekeepers? I thought about it. It's not for me. The badge still matters. At least we need to pretend that it does. Along with Rhodes, a number of JTF personnel started to depart and joined the local civilian settlement called Haven. This drop in personnel number meant that the JTF barely had enough manpower and patrols to maintain order or to defend vital positions. Settlements and other locations like the base of operations at City Hall in Lower Manhattan were left severely undermanned and vulnerable to attack. I'm doing everything that I can. We need six man patrols on six hour shifts. You're telling me we don't have 24 guys to keep us safe? I'm telling you, I don't have 24 machines that can keep up that schedule. We need at least 60 guards to fill these shifts. You know we don't have that many. Then you don't get to have six-man patrols around the clock. This won't hold, Roy. We're gonna get overrun. But if we push them too hard without rest, they're gonna make mistakes and we'll lose them. But I can get you two. The rest will have to rely on automated defenses and strike teams. We can't keep cutting corners like this. We have to budget our resources. You keep budgeting like this, there won't be any corners left to cut. With JTF numbers continuing to resign and join up with the civilian peacekeepers, Faye's concerns eventually became reality. Captain. I heard. Any news on the scale of the attack? There's nothing left. A handful of survivors made it out and are with the medics right now. Jesus. Any patrols in the area? Turner and her squad are ready, but won't move until they have backup. Two more squads are on their way as we speak. And Faye? She's gone. Her sister wasn't among the survivors. I'll turn her to keep an eye out. If Faye reaches the site, she'll need all the support she can get. Yes, sir. The settlement in Hell's Kitchen District was attacked by Rikers. With near to no defensive systems and a dwindling amount of JTF to properly guard and patrol the facilities, there were massive casualties, including Faye's sister. She put sole blame directly onto the JTF and the fact that they didn't have the numbers to protect the people entrusted into their care. But this wasn't the only area that was hit. There was an attack on City Hall. Division agents from DC were called in to investigate. They learned that the attack was orchestrated by the rogue first wave agent, Aaron Keener. City Hall was the JTF and division's main foothold in Lower Manhattan, serving as the base of operations for the area. But with the building destroyed, and the remnants of the Eclipse virus found all over the compound, Benitez, Fay, and the division agents head to the civilian settlement, Haven. Keener and his group of rogue agents are known to be located in Lower Manhattan, 
so they had to set up a forward operating base in the area. With Benitez's help, Paul Rhodes reluctantly allows the division to use Haven as a temporary base of operations. But over the coming months, more and more agents are showing themselves as rogues, as well as the once second wave commanding officer, Fei Lao. So that was a very quick summary of the story and Benitez's involvement in it so far. Basically, under orders, Benitez and the JTF set up the Dark Zone. The President activated the first wave of Division agents to assist the JTF with maintaining control. In quick succession, the President and the Vice President died, leaving the Speaker of the House as the new President. The new President immediately ordered the withdrawal of the JTF from the Dark Zone, leaving the Division agents to fend for themselves. This action resulted in the first wave agents to go dark, either killed or abandoning the mission. This also led to the uprising of the story's most influential antagonist, Aaron Keener, who would go on to rally other agents in his mission of overthrowing the government. Benitez is probably the last decent person in power in New York. He is loyal, good to the people under his command, and legitimately wants to help society get through this, with no ulterior motive. However, always the good little soldier, he will blindly follow commands without question. My question is, what would have happened if Benitez had ignored that one order altogether? The order that seems to have started the whole keener fueled rogue agent movement. He didn't even need to completely ignore the command. If he had procrastinated long enough, President Ellis would show his true colours, and the general command structure of the government would have shut down completely anyway. This one action has been responsible for not just Aaron Keener, but the large majority of the first wave agents who turned rogue. It always seems to come back to how the government left them behind to die. Now Keener is obviously a special case. There is this possibility that he would have always ended up going this way anyway. This situation may have just escalated his intentions. But without this particular event, he would have had a much harder time convincing so many agents to follow his cause. Over time we've seen him manipulate so many agents who are forced to abandon their posts based on this one particular instance. Sure, he may have managed to convince a few, especially the ones who were directly affected by the JTF withdrawal, but his numbers and available skill set that he would have tapped into would have been considerably lower. It could have even stopped the deployment of the Hunters, depending on which theory you follow. However, this would have had little to no effect on the sudden addition of the Black Tusk. As we know, they've been lurking in the shadows since before the first wave was even activated. Though it would have meant that the division numbers would have been substantially higher when combating their advances. Look at what a handful of agents have managed to achieve. Imagine if there were 10, 20 or 30 times those numbers. Now, obviously Benitez could have simply been replaced if he had failed to follow orders. But given the state of how things were, and how quickly things went downhill, this would have been unlikely. I mean, who would have replaced him? Plus, these men and women in the JTF have seen some pretty horrible things by this stage. Chain of command would obviously be important to these people, but for a lot of them, this command seems to have been lost and is out of touch. They will have been focusing on those closest to them, and for someone they respect as much as Benitez, even if he had told them exactly what he was told to do, and that he was choosing not to do it, a decent portion would have continued to follow him to the end, regardless. Look at what happened later on, the president siding with the Black Tusk, Rogue division agents who had once worked alongside them, loads of JTF lost faith in the government and left their positions because of what was happening above, around them. They needed someone like Benitez to take charge. Benitez was forced to follow an order that he knew wasn't the right thing to do, and he continues to regret it to this day. This call led to thousands of deaths in the Dark Zone, and many more because of the following rogue movement that developed later on. However, I'm someone who was told from an early age that I have problems with authority and question far too much. I'd be a terrible fit for any military or police unit, so what do you think? Do you think you could have followed through with a command like this? Don't get me wrong, I think Roy Benitez is the most decent and wholesome person in the Division story. I think he just made an error in judgement, not following his intuitions. A mistake that the country has been paying for ever since. But of course we need to remember, Hindsight is a beautiful thing. No one could have predicted that this would have happened. Another thing you need to consider is this sounds very similar to the way things played out for Colonel Ridgeway and the True Sons. But Benitez wasn't programmed this way. He wanted what was best for the people of his city. However, wasn't this what Ridgeway wanted too? What is right can be seen from many different angles at a time like this. And unless you can read the future, 
Who knows how some of these situations could play out. How are you holding up, Roy? Fine. You know, it's a sin to lie to a priest. Yes, Father, sorry. Some days are better than others, and today has been one of the bad ones. What's bothering you? Guilt, I suppose. What do you have to feel guilty about? I just don't feel that I deserve to be here when so many people who've served under me are not. How many do you think would be lost if you weren't still here? I made mistakes, Father. Huge mistakes. It just made everything worse. You can't punish yourself for the past. All you can do is try to make amends in the future. And every day you're doing that, Roy. Every day you keep these people safe. Every day you wake up and keep going. You are making amends for the sins you inherited. I just don't know that it'll ever be enough. The JTF pulled back and the first wave were crushed because of it. I should have fought harder. I shouldn't have let them do that to those agents. A bit of an odd one this time, but I hope you enjoyed it. And before the lynch mob comes at me, I actually like Benitez's character. I just wanted to take this video in a slightly different direction than simply talking about his past. I like analysing the story and how things could have ended up if things had played out differently. Like I've said in the past, if at the very least I can open you up to the depth or the direction the story could have taken, I've achieved what I aim to do. Otherwise, I am aware of a number of story leaks that are out there at the moment. I know far more than I would like to know about the potential direction that the Division story is going to take. I do not plan on covering any of this. One, none of this has been confirmed by the devs, and could be taken completely out of context like we've seen in the past. And two, I don't want to ruin the future story. It's already destroyed my ability to speculate on these things. I'd rather not screw it up for others. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers! Agent, my people say the threat has been eliminated. I thank you, my guys thank you, and the people in New York fucking thank you.